This lecture looks at second order responses of underdance systems using Laplace methods. So just a reminder that we're going to take second order systems with this type of model here. So a d 2 x dt squared plus b dx dt plus cx equals f, where f is a constant. And we want to know how do we solve these sorts of ODEs using Laplace methods. And notice here, a key point, we're going to assume zero initial conditions. Not because we have to, but because we want to focus on the concepts. So we're going to look at scenarios where the solution has got oscillatory components. So that is the poles are complex. And we're going to assume that students have been through some videos on inverse Laplace. So what are we going to do first? Take Laplace transforms of all the components in this differential equation. So if you look at the bit I'm circling now, you'll see what I've done is I've taken the Laplace transforms of the left-hand side, Laplace transforms of the right-hand side, and I end up with an expression like this. So x of s the Laplace transform of x of t times as squared plus bs plus c equals f of s, which is the Laplace transform of f. Now, I can rearrange this in order to get an expression just for x of s. So there it is, x of s equals 1 over as squared plus bs plus c times f of s. And you remember, I said that f was just a constant, so f of s we're going to assume for simplicity here is just 1 over s. We'll make it a constant of 1. And therefore, we end up with this expression here. Now, next we need to remind ourselves what are the sorts of Laplace transforms that we're interested in. Now, we're looking at oscillatory forms here. So I've got two possible forms. I've got this one, e to the minus pt times sine omega t. And the Laplace transform of that signal is here. It's omega over s plus p all squared plus omega squared. Alternatively, I might have e to the minus pt cos omega t, and the Laplace transform for that signal is this one here, s plus p over s plus p all squared plus omega squared. So those are the forms that we need. What's the technique then? If we're doing inverse Laplace, what we do is we force the Laplace transforms into the forms which are in our table. And we've just said what those two forms are. So what we're going to do is take our overall Laplace transform, here it is, 1 over a s squared plus b s plus c times s. And we're going to, first of all, notice that the denominator has got complex poles, so we're going to write that quadratic like this here. You see I've written it as s plus p or squared plus omega squared. So I've recognized it's got complex roots and so I can write it in this form here. Now having done that, my next step is to say, all right, what will the partial fractions look like? So I'm going to tell you that the partial fractions look like this. I've got the c of s term at the far end, which recognizes that there's a step. And then what I've done with the quadratic denominator, this s plus p square or squared plus omega squared, I've said the numerator will have a term a times s plus p and b times omega. Now, if we just go back a page, you will see the s plus p corresponds to the cosine term and the omega corresponds to the sine term. So what we're essentially saying is that when we to inverse Laplace on this signal here, you'll see we end up with e to the minus pt, the p, because you'll see we've got this s plus p squared, and then we have a times cos omega t, because in the numerator it was a times s plus p, and then b times sine omega t, because in the numerator we had b omega. So this is the technique we're going to use, and what we'll do is use a couple of examples to demonstrate how this works. So here's the first example. We've got a differential equation, x double dot plus 2x dot plus 2x equals 1. Take the Laplace transforms and rearrange, and we end up with this expression here. That x of s equals 1 over s squared plus 2s plus 2 times s. So what I'm going to do is say, it looks to me like this denominator has got complex roots. And indeed, you can see fairly straightforwardly that the quadratic part can be written out like this. So p squared plus 2p plus 2 can be written as p plus 1 all squared plus 1. 
and therefore if I'm going to do partial fractions of this term down here I can write it as a times s plus 1 plus b all over s plus 1 all squared plus 1 squared plus c over s and you'll see that this term is going to correspond to an sorry, an a e to the minus t sine t and the b bit is going to correspond to a b e to the minus t oh sorry I've made a silly mistake there the s plus 1 obviously is the cos t and the b is e to the minus t sine t so let's do the partial fractions then first of all we can use the cover up rule to find c so if you look at this factor here and you cover up the s and then set s equal to 0 you end up with a half so clearly this c is going to be equal to a half so I'll remove that so next I'm going to use expansion to determine a and b so I multiply both sides by the whole denominator so if I multiply this bit here sorry wrong color this bit here by the whole denominator I get left with just one there's one here if I multiply this by the whole denominator you'll see I end up with a s plus a plus b times s and if I multiply c by the whole denominator I end up with c times s squared plus 2s plus 2 so now what I can do is equate coefficients of s squared and s so if I equate coefficients of s squared you'll see I get a s squared plus c s squared equals naught so a plus c equals naught so that's one identity but we already know c we've done it up here so that tells me that a equals minus 0.5 and next if we equate coefficients of s you'll see I've got an a plus b times s and I've got a c times 2s so I end up with a plus b plus 2c equals naught and I can use that to work out that b equals minus a half so obviously a was my cos component b was my sine component so you see I've ended up with e to the minus t minus a half cos omega t minus a half sine omega t plus a half and what I should have done is I know that that omega is 1 so let's just cross it out so I can just write cos t and sine t next example then this one we'll do by writing every single step so the first step is to take the plus transforms so I'm going to end up with s squared plus 4s plus 13 into x of s equals 7 over s or x of s equals 7 over s s squared plus 4s plus 13 now I can see immediately that this denominator has got complex roots so I'm going to write it in the appropriate quadratic form which is 7 over s and then I'm going to have s plus 2 all squared plus 3 squared and you can see immediately therefore that I've got sine and cosine terms so something of the form s plus 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 3 squared is equivalent to e to the minus 3t sorry e to the minus 2t get the right cos 3t and something of the form 3 over s plus 2 squared plus 3 squared is going to be equivalent to the form e to the minus 2t sine 3t so what you can do is you can see immediately the forms that I'm looking for I want this form to get the cosine component this form to get the sine component so what I can do now is write my partial fractions so let's do that so what we're going to write is 7 over s into s plus 2 squared plus 3 squared equals a over s plus b s plus 2 plus 3c over s plus 2 squared 
plus 3 squared. And you can see that before I solve this, this tells you the equivalent signal is going to be A plus E to the minus 2T into B cos 3T plus C sine 3T. So you'll notice that I've put the cosine component and the sine component, I've expressed them clearly so that when I do the inverse Laplace, everything falls out. So all I need to do now is solve for the residues A, B and C. So I can use the cover-up rule to find A. So if I do that, then what you're going to find is A equals 7 over 13. I'm just going to write that down. You can look at earlier videos if that was too quick. And then I'm going to use expansion to find B and C. So if I multiply both sides up by the denominator, I'm going to get 7 equals A into S squared plus 4S plus 13 plus B S S plus 2 plus 3 C S. So what I can do now is equate coefficients of S squared and coefficients of S. So if I do S squared first, equate the coefficients, I'm going to end up with 0 equals A plus B. So that tells me that B equals minus 7 over 13 because I already know A. And if I do coefficients of S, so I just S, not S squared, write that correctly, then we're going to get 0 equals 4A plus 2B plus 3C. And if you solve that, you'll end up with C equals minus 14 over 39. Here's a couple more examples that you can try by yourself. I'm not going to do them, so I'm just putting them here. Um, pause the video if you want to write them down yourself. So in conclusion, it's straightforward to use inverse Laplace to determine the step response of second order models with complex poles. First, write the output signal as a Laplace transform and use standard inverse Laplace methods such as the expansion technique. Now, a motivate, motivated viewer might like to prove that the solution derived using these inverse Laplace methods matches the solutions that were derived using ODE methods in the fourth video.